we, we had sort of a collection of items going on, some that are macroeconomic and some that are Apple specific. And we're not going to sit around waiting for the macro to change. I, I hope that it does, and I'm actually optimistic. Uh, but we're going to focus uh, really uh, deeply on the things we can control. So as we look at what's going on in China, the, it's clear that the economy began to slow there for the second half. And what I believe to be the case is the trade tensions between the United States and China put additional pressure on their economy. And so we saw as the quarter went on a, things like uh, traffic in our retail stores, traffic in our channel partner stores, uh, the reports of the smartphone industry uh, contracting, uh, particularly bad in November. And I haven't seen the December number yet, but I would, I would guess that that would not be good either. The, the story on iPhone is, in addition to the emerging market weakness, which is primarily in China, it's that uh, there's not as many subsidies as there used to be from a carrier point of view. And where that didn't all happen yesterday, for if you've been out of the market for two or three years and you come back, it looks like that to you. We have started a trade-in program. And we started it primarily because it's great for the environment. You know, it keeps a unit with someone that, that wants it and the person who wants a new one gets one as well. And it's great for developers and, and so forth as well. But, but we haven't really marketed it very much. And the truth is to a consumer, the trade-in looks like a subsidy because it lowers the price of you, the phone that you want. Look, I mean, this is probably the darkest chapter for Cook and Apple in the modern iPhone history. It was a massive miss for the December quarter with China as the key culprit. I mean, China revenues essentially missed by 40, 50 percent. This was really a gut punch to the street. And even though expecting soft numbers, this was uh, really even beyond the realm of negative possibilities. I mean, look, an 8% revenue miss for Apple uh, is in the last decade, that's really unheard of. I think it just speaks to how demand for this latest iPhone, especially in 10R in China, really was met with minimal demand. And fundamentally now going forward, it looks about 20 to 25 million iPhones less will be sold from Apple. And that's something which is going to have ramifications across tech, including semiconductor and chip names. But what's really happening is customers are not upgrading on this latest cycle, and a lot of it's pricing. I mean, Apple shot themselves in the foot, in our opinion, with a phone above $1,000, and in China is where it really backfired this quarter, and you've seen the damage in the, the what I view as Armageddon-like numbers. There's a feeling that Apple is not going to cut prices and not going to do the mea culpa. And that's something that they need to do in order to get this back on the right direction, stimulate demand. Blaming the macro card, it sounds good for a press release, but ultimately it's not something investors are going to buy into. So at this point, it's more of a demand than a supply issue. But nonetheless, if tariffs and the trade war increase, it could only get worse for Apple.